Uh, no. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't look like I am streaming. Streaming, but you cannot hear me, correct? I can hear you. Oh, great. All right, I can hear you. You can hear me. We're both streaming, and we have a game. This is exciting. Except I'm not sure I'm streaming now. Hold on. Okay, this works. All right. No great things are ever accomplished without a certain amount of struggle. All in all, this wasn't bad. Right. So, we're here, geez, what is it, 31st March 1941, 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, geez, it's the axis turn. All right. So, uh, in general terms, for the uninitiated, what's your mission here? I mean, other than kill the British guys. Yeah, there's some objectives. Uh, this this is really the initial entry of the Germans into the war, or rather, into North Africa. Okay. So the Italians have failed. And Germany, because it had nothing better to do in the run-up to June of 41, decided to send an army to North Africa. Under Erwin Rommel. Somebody who's, yeah, you know, this, this fella. Right, and so the Germans have identified... Hang on a second here, I gotta mess with these settings again. still hear me? I sure can. I can hear you fine. Okay, well I'm streaming and it looks like that's working. Hooray! As far as I can tell. Okay, yeah, so <clears throat> Rommel and what becomes the Africa Corps have arrived. They've identified uh, a location where they think the British defenses are somewhat weak and it would be a good place for them to execute a breakthrough. And so there is an initial German advance. Uh, and here we go. For those who don't know, if you're watching my stream, I can't see Doug, not unless he comes in the line of sight of my guys. So we're going to be listening a lot to see what he might be. Uh, he's somewhere out there in the wastes of the desert. And likewise, uh, you can see my troops, but I cannot see any of the allied troops yet. So uh, we're going to try and do some recon here and see what we can figure out.
those who are watching my stream, uh, this is actually a reconnaissance detachment that we're going to try and move in here and see if we can't discover the enemy. With any luck, and if historic history is any precedent, those guys should have a very short work lifespan. I think it was Patton once who told a tank battalion, drive that way until you get shot at. Right. I guess we didn't say it at the outset, but this is a pre-release candidate, pretty close to final, for Wargame Design Studios Panzer Battles North Africa 1941, third in the Panzer, Panzer Battle series, following their very successful Kursk Southern Flank and Normandy. Units are platoons and squadrons. I've just turned on the highlight organization button so that you can actually see what units are part of this reconnaissance unit. some other guys to move here, so let's jump around the map a little bit. And that is uh, a reconnaissance unit there, but it is not a the, the big reconnaissance unit that we moved first. This is the reconnaissance movement of a Panzer regiment. And just logistically, folks, if it's going to be on Doug's turn, you... Oh, hello there. Nice to see you. That's what them boys do. 30 dudes in a jeep. <laughs> That's about right. Only these guys are on motorcycles. Sweet. So I'm curious, Doug, do you use the NATO or do you use the graphic faces? Uh, I'm using NATO right now, and I'm actually right now changing the toolbar, too, because my eyes are having trouble with it. Yeah, one of the things that the folks at WDS have done is really put a lot of thought into the toolbar, um, trying to clean it up, organize it, reflect the fact that computers have evolved over the last 20 years. But uh, I also particularly like the fact that, yeah, for some folks whose eyesight might not be the best, I call myself president in that score, they've, uh, they've made it bigger, if that's what you'd like, which is nice. 
And what I just did there was I took that unit out of travel mode. Uh, units can be in travel mode or they can be in basically combat movement mode. And if you're in travel mode and you happen to get shot at, uh, bad things can happen because you're, you're not advancing cautiously. So I've taken this unit out of travel mode. Much to my disappointment. Uh, yeah. All right, just a little bit left to move here. essentially the regimental trains. We've got the regimental headquarters. We've got some regimental engineering resources. And then we've got regimental heavy weapons. I don't care how many times I do a live broadcast or cover this game, if you've not read their OOBs and their research stuff and you love this period or any of the periods of World War II, you're depriving yourself. They, they make the boast in their supporting documents that this is the most detailed OOB to this level anywhere, uh, books, games, anywhere, and uh, I think it's true. Yeah, I, I believe so. And just so people can see there, I've changed the uh, unit graphics to the actual uh, the photographic uh, unit graphics. All right, so folks don't go insane on my side. Might as well flip it over that way, too. It looks pretty cool. You can still see NATO symbols on it. There they are. And, and here we are doing our little advance, and I'm going to end my turn. All right, should be over to Jim. It is. No changes in command. Thanks for letting me know that. This box right here gives you a briefing as to what might have happened over the turn. It gets busier or not, depending on game state changes. It's for big changes. All right. Well, I'm not revealing anything to my worthy opponent when I say things like, what we have here is a meeting of pickets. And we're guessing as to the axis, no pun intended, of advance. So we're going to keep this real simple. That's what I would have guessed. What I would have guessed. Out here. That's what I wanted. Nothing there. All right. You all set, Jerry? Yep. I'm going to change my screen layout here just a little bit to give a little bit more map on screen. Sure. <clears throat> when you blow up that toolbar, you lose a little bit up top. You do, which is why, frankly, for me, I've been at it for so many years that I just know where they are intuitively. I could never see them all that well, so I just sort of know them by location. Yeah, but, me too. Uh, and with the new, but with the new toolbar, I don't. Oh yeah, and there is a lot of nice, nice stuff to be had. But anyway, let's see here. We got 16 turns. I didn't do the one thing I always do. Just poke over to the victory conditions and see that right now, ooh, the Germans are at a major defeat. So they have to come in here and take things. Now, I do know this that I read in the briefing. This is one of the scenarios that uses one of WDS's real innovations for this game in the series, variable victory conditions. Uh, basically giving the ability of 
victory locations to decrease or increase in value over time. So that what was valuable turn one maybe isn't so valuable turn 10 or vice versa. So we'll see how that plays out. But anyway, over to you, Fritz. one visibility is improving uh, and number two I've got some air units so let's go see what those are I'm gonna have a funny hunch you don't have measure Schmitz those guys are busy those guys are busy right now yep well what I do have are uh, some Stukas ooh I would like to have Stukas Better use them now, because they're not that useful later in the war. Alright, time for some more creeping up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you know, kids. <laughs> oh, gracious. since we're kind of playing this from the perspective of showing it off a little bit, I, I will mention <clears throat> Jim sees me, but I do not see Jim yet. One of the things that uh, this game does very, very well is manage relative sighting. And a unit that doesn't reveal itself by shooting can keep concealment. Or moving, for that matter. followed the road. I didn't have to move them, you know, hex by hex. have 16 turns here so while I'm I'm tempted to move slowly uh, I kind of need to get moving because if I wait too long I'm I'm not going to be able to grab any of these victory hexes so caution uh, is something I'm interested in but probably not going to be able to uh, to indulge myself too much on <laughs>
And for those who might happen to be looking at my end of the battle, it's always that feeling of you can see some of them, but not all of them. All right, it's yours. Visibility getting better. Taking advantage of the jump map. Trying to see all that naughty red color. One of the other things that they did in this game, different from Kursk and Normandy, is they hand drew these maps. Uh, Kursk particularly, a little less so Normandy, were almost entirely procedurally generated out of the Panzer campaign maps from Tiller. But they're still great maps, but the level of detail in these is astonishing, particularly given their size. Yeah, these are, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Okay. All right. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Tell me your secrets. Yeah, I figure we left those guys at home. Ha! All right. Back to you. Still improving. Oh, lots more air support. Where are you going to hit me? Yeah, that's a good question. Because there's a whole lot of desert out there. That's why I haven't really been flying missions. <laughs> Right around that time, the Duke boys decided to go buzzing around Tobruk. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That's awesome. That's what they're for. So suppose we should have a shot at them, Tom. No, no, let them go. See here how the units are nicely color coded so you can tell what parent unit they're part of. 
Yeah, let me know the folks at home what Doug is talking about. You're talking about divisional colors, yeah. Correct. Yeah, which are you can see in the the little symbol in the upper when you're zoomed in. I'm zoomed out a little bit now, and it's gone back to NATO colors. So, All right. NATO counters. Yeah, like I said, I'm a NATO guy all around, but the uh, the divisional markings, especially when you go out a little bit, are pretty terrific. All right, you're up after I've just been playing cautiously here. All right. Let's see here. Do it. Use the jump map, genius. There you go. Man. One forgets if you, you know, my Napoleonic's love is great, but when I was raised where I was, a lot of guys, shoot, we had a lot of World War II veterans still alive. So I knew a lot of this stuff, but one forgets how quickly you screw has got the Panzer IV to the desert. Them uh, threes, yeah. them them threes don't give me the itch, but yeah, four is a whole different story. Yeah, I don't like that none. But you know what? I cannot like it all I want. It don't make a difference. Good Lord. Yeah, yeah. All right, show me. So do you get an actual Rommel counter here? No, I don't think he's actually in this. Okay. Just a, this is a, yeah, I suppose, I mean, this is a pretty, what are we at, about a regiment on a side here? Yeah, correct. It's a brigade level engagement on each side. Okay. Brigade plus. Yeah. Do, looking where you are. Turn are we at here? Still far too much time. Far too much. Back to you. Telling me visibility is improving, but I'm not sure I'm buying that. Yeah, it's interesting. I suppose it's just the sun coming or the the sun coming up, but yeah, it's 11:30. You think? Yeah, I don't know. I'm curious to know what that means for those guys. Did they get off their motorcycles and they're walking them? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Is that the deal? Yeah, they're they're playing 
dragoon. <laughs> yeah, except horses walk themselves. Howdy. Well, there we go. You didn't have to leave. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> this is not sporting. What was that you were worried about again? <laughs> <laughs> this is not sporting. Saying, yeah, take that. Well, at least we know who's out there now. Supporting the cause of the Allies to be very, very quiet and not to reveal anyone else's position. Should have guessed you were holed up in that village there. Hmm. Zach Grant's telling us that uh, 
the quality on my stream is better than on yours. I don't know what we can do about that. Yeah, I don't know. We're using different... Uh, definitely using different streaming software now from what I'm watching on... I've got it pulled up here on my screen, and it, it looks fine. I can't hear it. Cause right, because otherwise you'll get that feedback nastiness. Right, I've got it muted, but um, it's a standard YouTube stream. Okay. Still, Zachary, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, absolutely. Over to you, sir. See, visibility is improving. It tells me that, too. All right, come here. Here, Francis. See here. Oh, sweet Mary Margaret. Oh! Yeah, that's what I would have guessed. Oh, good Lord. Um... Uh, Captain Darwin's watching on uh, my stream, but for some reason the chat's not working. Mm. Well, tell it. Well, I can tell him my stream's better anyway. <laughs> and that would have that would have been the case, technology notwithstanding. Playing the filthy Germans. All right, you are new. Yeah. Oh, sure. Attack the headquarters. <laughs> Ask Captain Darwin about my affection for attacking things, light skinned vehicles. I have a reputation. These these Panzer IVs are coming for you, man. I, I understand. I understand. As if I was going to evade them. Oh, goodness. Here in Europe here. Anybody? Anything? Any, no, of course not. For folks who don't know, one of the most valuable drop-down dialogues in any of the Tiller games, quite honestly, is under Command, you will find the Air and Artillery missions. It's also a button on the more elaborated toolbars. And it's just a great way of knowing who can see what. And unfortunately, most of my artillery guys are having a Coke and a smoke and wondering why there's shooting going on over there. So... All right. How many dead dudes do we have? Not too many so far. Yeah, that's. I was going to say, it's those two guys I just killed. Yeah. Grand total of two cat. Yeah, take that. There's a couple of headquarters orderlies that are not coming around. <laughs> that's, I just came blazing through in a heavily armored Yugo. And, <laughs> that's uh, right. <laughs> daka daka. Oh, the King's Dragoons. God bless you guys. Over to you. Uh-oh. Got a headquarters out of command. You know why? <laughs> Heavily armored yeah. Hugo. Because they're running away. <laughs> are not amused. Yes. <laughs> are those 88s? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. Ow. Yeah, that was totally a jerky move. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> just, just saying. I, I do like the little burning vehicles in the hex, though.
lines. Thank you very much. What did you think we weren't going to? Back in the trucks. Hi. Well, that's not exactly a surprise. Right. Uh, Zachary indicates those minefield guys are supposed to earn their pay somehow. I suppose that's true. Yeah, I don't think we loaded them onto their trucks for their good looks. <laughs> Unlike it, one of the remarkable things about where you just kicked me out of, those guys were hanging out in weeds. Basically, that wasn't even improved. That wasn't even an improved hex. Yeah, I see you're in some brush here, and you are improved. Yeah, take that. We've dug some ditches. You'll be sorry. of having airplanes if they can't bomb something. Probably out of range. Are these Gotta ground be. craft? Gotta be. I have a hunch that most of your guys are ranged in at my the, the big main area up here at boy and I'm gonna butcher this. Al Munz Muneazala? but I don't know. The ways of the Luftwaffe are lost on me. Oh, um, Munazala, yeah. That's probably the case. I mean, I certainly don't know. Something here said something about reinforcements. 
What? Oh my, look at that. Yeah, nothing quite like here in that, huh, kids? This is looking more like a brigade by the minute. All right, so what I was after there before I was so rudely interrupted by his armored Yugo deciding to shoot up my headquarters is uh, I wanted to make sure that I got my headquarters in a place that I could dismount them so they could expand their command range. Uh, you saw earlier that I had sort of a highlighted ring of hexes or bigger hexes, uh, or, or a hex-shaped area, a highlighted hex-shaped area around my headquarters, and they were mounted, and it, it seriously decreases their command range. And so what I was going for, and you can see it now, what I was going for was to get them emplaced in that village, dismount them, and then uh, they would have more of a, a, a command range, the leader, the, the regimental headquarters would, uh, to support what I perceived to be a developing attack. So they're there now and, and doing their thing uh, since we got rid of Jim, but you know now I'm not so sure we need them there. Visibility improving. <laughs> now, this is interesting. Tell me, uh, you've got that group just north of Al Barakin? Yeah. How much is that VP Loke worth to you now? Okay, so it still shows 25 to you. Correct. That's interesting. Okay, so for me, it's worth nothing. Huh. Which makes sense. Yeah, it does. Which I guess, which I guess makes sense, because at this point, what's going to happen... Do, 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 do. Yeah, I can't blame you for that. Proud tradition of knights everywhere. <whistles> oh, ho, 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 but you have cap up. I did not know that. Hey, Jim. What do you think? Yeah? Uh, actually, uh, Jim Snyder. Oh. Uh, sound better? Snyder was telling me I was hard to hear. Okay. So I boosted mic gain in the streaming software a little bit. Let's see if I sound better. You don't sound better. You sound louder, but that's okay. I kid. Uh, I didn't. More, more tanks for you. <laughs> the uh to go to my point i forgot to check cap levels going into this but you uh you just bagged one the luft stash is in the air it is <laughs> no bob works for me don't you forget that <laughs> not yet yeah it's true all right look in here what do you see All these dudes in their damn motorcycle. All right. 
all you. All right, time for some engineers. Zach's right about that. really do like uh, what the WDS guys have done with very clever little edge of counter things uh, to tell you when something's disordered or what kind of unit it is or things like that. It, it really has added some nice information onto the, the counters. Zach, who is clearly on the side of the righteous, indicates it's not terribly sporting of you to clear my mind. We spent a lot of time putting those there. <laughs> it's because of your short pants. They offend me. <laughs> <laughs> there are some... If Again, if you go into the, uh, the background stuff that comes along with this game... There are some fabulous pictures of the troops that served in the desert. First, just an amazing run of them from an ethnic and racial background perspective. But also, oh my goodness, the British guys tooling around the desert in Bren carriers. There's one guy who is, he's got a driver and him tooling around in a Bren carrier doing I don't know what. If you had a Bren carrier, what would you do? Well, that's it. Well, right. Especially if you had nothing but rock and sand to drive over. Yeah. That's a party right there. Oh, yeah. Plus, I can shoot at anything that doesn't look like my side. Yeah, we put mines there, too. Really, really starting to harsh my buzz. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And this will become mine.
I want the record to reflect while you're making your other decisions that while we are tooling around in the heat of the desert and refighting battles in March of 1941, Bayonet Brandt from the Armchair Dragoons is playing a game called Space Base. But of course he is. A lot of purple and pink from what I'm seeing. Well, I'll leave pink out of it, but a lot of blues and pinks and pastels. Not very gray car key. It's all you now. No changes in command, and it would seem vis visibility is not improving. Or is either. Hmm, must have run up on some of your own minds, huh? No, no. No, no. Not that time. Oh, these fellas, that's right. Yeah, there's some wrecks sitting out there for some reason. Yeah, I told you, you got me with Cap. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, I didn't see that. I was messing with the controls. I wasn't sure where that was. Yep, yep. <clears throat> Everybody watching my stream saw it. Almost saw me stop dead in place because I didn't know what's going on. see you now. Your turn's coming. At least we weren't in travel mode. <laughs> that is some wicked kind of range. Look at those tubes. That is not inspiring. <laughs> guys, fellas, guys. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Just love it when you fire and you get the pew pew. So I, I told you I bought new headphones today the head i told you i bought new headphones today the ones that i'd had i'd actually had for 10 years and they were wired ones okay and so i, I have actually developed muscle memory for over the course of 10 years to managing the wires as i move around sure so, so i'm sitting here now with wireless a headset and every time I turn to go look to my left or something like that, I, I, act, I try and move the wires that no longer exist. Sure. I, I can imagine that. I feel like they should be there, and they're not. Over to you. Oh, really? Admittedly, that was overkill, but 
I really well, so should. did you did you just fly in Stukas on a recon platoon? I did. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I have airplanes. I have to use them. I, I, I am telling Garing on you. <laughs> Send him a message. Boom boom. I am unamused by that. Yeah, you may tell your pants they had no effect. They were shooting at one dude. <laughs> well, not not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Reggie. Well done. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta get moving here. Oh, hey there.
<clears throat> answering a question from Zach, this is a, uh, it's both an old and a new game. It's an old game in the sense that ultimately it's based on the same Tiller engine that gave us Panzer campaigns. It is a new game in that the guys at War Game Design Studios have focused it down from the much higher level of Panzer campaigns and pushed it down to this level, which is essentially the same as Panzer Blitz and Panzer Leader. So it's much more focused, the, the hexes cover less distance across, and then they have worked and tweaked the uh, tweak some of the, the settings, they've done a lot of stuff under the hood, and then done a bananas amount of research to do both OOB and scenario design and map design the right way. This is expected to come out right around Thanksgiving, um, and it will be available from the John Tiller Software Store. All right, I'm done with my messing around. There we go. Well, one of the things that's familiar to anybody that's played Tiller before is that units at the start of a scenario can be fixed or not. Um, a bunch of my fellers were fixed. Um, they unfix when either timing occurs or, as I suspect was the case in this instance, the opponent gets too close. It's intended to prevent me from doing ahistorical maneuvers. sound before that's delightful really nice crack as it fires yeah and they've also got the little clink in the tube yeah i like that yeah my tanks are doing that too are they i like that it's the little things that matter oh Ooh, really oh why not yes Ouchie! How you doing? Yeah, now what's a little weird about that is uh, the, uh, I think we just found a bug because it removed the counter. But, it didn't on my end. Yeah, it did on my end. And uh, it, was a, it was one vehicle, so it shouldn't have nuked the whole counter. I've got... How many units did you have there? I've oh, got what? a stack. I've got a stack now on that ridge, and it's got four and four. Yeah, which is what it's supposed to. But I and I see those, um, you know, over in the the hex info area. Yeah. But what uh, what's happened is that the rec marker has replaced the counter. Interesting, because it has not on my screen. Odd. Okay, well, that's an interesting note. We'll see what happens when you get the turn back. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I can move them out of there, but right now they got over. Well, no, I'm, no, no, I'm just saying if, if maybe it refreshes, I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Because there's also that refresh sync button we can hit, but always scares me to tell you the truth. Well, I can probably just turn off all counters and turn them back on, and, but it comes back. There you go. Do -do -do. Yeah, it should it be did. fair. We should, we should, in fairness, note that uh, this is not the final, final, final game. Uh, it's getting real close. It's getting real close. But uh, as I said, we're still a couple weeks from a gold candidate. Actually, I suspect we're a couple days from a gold candidate and then final release. All right. That was, that was here. Here we go. Back to you. I 
Actually, I've had more than one unit disappear. Hmm. Maybe we should do a... I, I forget, are you hosting or am I? Uh, I think you are, but as soon as I moved him out of the hex, it, it showed back up. Okay, cool. Zach has joined the side of the righteous. Your counter problem was indeed the result of you playing the bad guys. <laughs> I, I, I'm down with that. <laughs> I got Darwin on my feed now. He, uh, he indicates that you have stealth units now. <laughs> exactly. And I knew German science was advanced, but... I had an interesting online conversation with the lead designer of these. Oh boy. Yeah, how you doing? Talking about uh, the largest scenarios. This is a modest scenario in terms of what this game will be offering at launch. I mean, the Normandy game allows you to play the invasion of Normandy till I believe August at the platoon level. Let, let that sink in for a minute. But this one allows you to play the whole of Compass, the whole of Battle Axe, and a number of others. And it's funny because I asked him, I said, is this, you know, do you do those scenarios just because you kind of can? Or what? And he said, actually, we start there and work down. We, we start with the biggest ones to see if we sort of have the feel right. And then and only then do they work down to more modest scenarios like this to be a part of it. Captain Darwin, the, the if what I what you're talking about is what I'm seeing on the stream. I just switched over to the stream. That's actually not stealth units. That's units popping in and out of LOS. Um, that unit can see those things, but only for about a second and a half before Doug carefully hustles them out of my line of sight. And uh, and to Zachary, yeah, this is this this. this System, wow, wow, can I say the dumb words? Um, this system again is set at the very same level as squad leader. Uh, Panzer leader. Panzer leader, sorry. Panzer leader, Panzer blitz. Captain Darwin is indeed blaming the stealthy units on all the work that our friend Vance is doing with Dark Matter. 
Uh, I'm sure he's crawling around out here in the desert somewhere. If he's, I, I don't know if you saw this, but apparently scientists have photographed or captured something, something emerging from a black hole. That's a little worrisome. And that's what I said. I said, you know what? I don't want anything to do with something that gets out of a black hole. I don't care what it is. Well, don't you want to see what it is? Nope. No, I want it to go back. Yeah, <laughs> because cause the first thing I thought was Thanos. It's unquestionably some sort of ancient one kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cthulhu comes to mind. But yeah, this the, nothing Vance is doing is for, to our good. <laughs> now I've concerned Zachary. Yep, yeah, something got out of a black hole. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> He's searching the web. I, I Look, I, I appreciate what you're doing, but you're not going to be able to prepare yourself. Yeah, if it's coming out of a black hole, it, you pretty much just give it up. <laughs> Say your goodbyes. All right, there's some pew pew coming up, I think. Is there? I've missed, I've not seen much of your stukas there, champ. Give me another recon squad to bomb. <laughs> Ah, oh, gravy. Mm -hmm. Ooh! One unit recovered fatigue. I'm the luckiest boy in the world. Get me out of here. I also love that sound effect that has the dirt tumbling to the ground at the end of it. Right. That's so great. All right. Yep. Hey, lads. You know what you need to do here. This is where the game's going to get played. did you not see? Yeah, those are those little, like, 2.2 centimeter meter, uh, mortars. There. Yeah, yeah, and, and you got motorcycle dudes walking their motorcycles. What's your point? <laughs> My guys are fast. They get out of the I... way. <laughs> I'll take this. Tired, boy, oh boy. Oh, Lordy Atlantic Ocean. Thank you. We're streaming on YouTube. I'm playing Jim live, and both of us are streaming it onto YouTube. Well, I will when I go talk to him. He can't. It's muted right now. Well, that's an unpleasant choice. There are people watching. Oh, look, lots of you. What's that? That's part of the problem. What's that? So, I can see you on the jump map, but I can't actually see you on the map map. Mm. Now, that could be, I mean, you're in trenches. I can see the improved positions now, but I can't see units in the improved positions. So again, I think I've got an overlay problem where it's overlaying graphics and it's not showing units and overlay graphics. Got it. See them in the sidebar. I'm seeing you just fine. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with this. 
basically if I can see a improved position, I've got to assume there's somebody there. And there is a certain amount of sighting involved with that, but once you've seen me, you should be able to see me. Yeah, if I can see you on the jump map, I ought to be able to see you here. Yeah, I think that's so. I can't see <sighs> your, your Yugo there. Devices are fun. I know what the problem is. Mm. I clicked the specials on top of button. <laughs> That'll do it every time. Yeah, and it, it really is overlaying the specials, not just leaders. Yeah. And I help your viewers there. Oh, Lord. All right, all right, all right. I got to stop pulling my thumbs and worrying. Here you go. Oh, look at this. Turn to you. Hey, Jesus, you got, what, like a three-pounder mounted on a truck? Maybe. Yeah, what, business is it, what business is it of yours? That's, that's some hellacious uh, English engineering there. Just just for the record, it's what we had to hand. A couple of points of bookkeeping. Uh, Zach's a librarian. It's what he does is search and educate. Fair enough. Captain Darwin indicates that, this, that what's really going on is that the Space Force is returning from victory over the aliens. Now I'm going to have to load up space pants. <laughs> and Bayonet Brandt says that there are no jeeps for me to kill. to Tanky McTankface. All my years of Panzer Leader, I want to cat you so bad. On a tank? Well, uh, doesn't mean he didn't want to shoot you. <laughs> I, I commend his spirit. Oh, now you're going to get it. Oh, man, you brought the ones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What gun is in that thing? Is that a 20? Yeah, I think it's a 20. <laughs> That's so great. I love these games. I love early war stuff, period. Uh, one thing for those who don't know, 
WDS is also responsible for all the gold versions. This is something Zachary was mentioning. They're responsible for all the gold versions of the Panzer campaign games, and they're getting ready to release Pan uh, 1940, France 1940, and I'm so stoked. Oh, yeah. Brent wants to know what's wrong with a mortar on a tank. I mean, other than the fact that it's not effective? It's it's not a mortar mounted on a tank, Brant. It was a mortar <laughs> firing at a tank. <laughs> That's the thing we're wondering about. <laughs> it was op fire. I declare myself innocent to the blood of that just mortar round. Yeah, and we didn't do that. We didn't do it before the beginning of the game, but you can actually set your op fire preferences. So if you're watching my stream, I've just popped this up. So you can see here that you can change what you want. Uh, and in this particular case, I have a unit selected, so I want to not select a unit. here you can see in this screen I can actually set what kind of targets I want uh, different kinds of weaponry to fire on so I have uh, by default indirect fire units are set to fire on hard targets at long range which is what actually just happened uh, you may not want that so you can adjust that Oddly enough, it doesn't want to let me set op fire controls while it's under your control. Yeah, pew pew, take that. It's the Armored Yugo Brigade. And Darwin's inquiring if we're going to play Armored Brigade this way next week. I said, we barely know how to play this. What makes you think we know that modern stuff? Exactly. There are far too few muskets. Right. We're, it's, it's, it's far more likely that we could suddenly break into seven years' war. But since we had a nice demo client from the good friends at WDS, who do love us at our chair, Armchair Dragoons, we figured we'd do this thing. Brandt has now graciously posted us to Facebook, indicating, yes, it's happening with all sorts of extra sarcasm. Now, that's completely unfair. We have just enough sarcasm. Not extra. Just the right amount. All the pew pew for you. All right. Uh, oh, 
that's cold. I've just been told that one of my units is isolated. I suspect I know which one it is. Oh, it's not the one I thought it was. Oh, Lord Jeebus. Drawing op fire from the known universe. Nice. What do you care? What is that? So, uh, yeah. sounds, sounds like a 37 to me. Yeah. Oh, well. I don't know as they had much of a future either way. This is annoying. Nothing like having to drive back through your own minefields. Ouchie. Yeah. Oddly enough, it merely left us fatigued. All right, lads. Yes, yes, yes. I still want to do this, but I'm not going to. I sort of want to experiment by dropping a mortar on one of those ones. But I won't. <laughs> oh, it's like that, is it? Okay. Here we go. Lads. This is kind of important. Making the German sleepy is not going to help. <laughs> there we go. Sleepy and disrupted, I can live with. Yeah, that guy was already pretty unhappy. <laughs> so you're saying he's crabby and disrupted. Yeah, I think he uh, he's asking exactly who he made angry, so that he ended up in these ones. <laughs> well, it's, it's a two yeah. C, but still. Well, but to the <sighs> to the point. I mean, you know, I just fired at that dude at what kind of range, and just appear to have aggravated him as much as anything. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> I'm not sure that. Yeah, well, over to you. Well, that wasn't worth it. I don't know. You had to figure that if I had air cover, it was going to be there. Yeah, but the the two pounder anti tank gun on the back of a flat nosed truck deserves to die. <laughs> <laughs> and the scary thing is. Knowing the guys at WDS, that picture is taken from some book somewhere. Oh, it's accurate, but it's ugly. I do. Oh, I see. You're making aesthetic judgments about my units now.
Zach is headed out. Take care of Zach. Captain Darwin had to bounce. Take care of him. I guess Thanks, all guys. we have is bayonet. Yeah, there was there was not a whole lot of upside on that. <laughs> Bless your hearts, guys. They're yeah. trying. Fire! Fire, sir. <laughs> They're giving it their best shot. Oh my god. Okay, Uncle Krabby here is gonna get out of the way. Just gonna get up on that ridge line and shoot at the arc. Yeah, pretty much. Not that it's doing me any good. You are underestimating my lorries. I evidently am. Evidently, they're armored by sheets of uh, of of cast iron or something. Something uh, that has sheets. I've been told that it is called uh, Brandon. In my stream, is telling me that uh, that particular weapon system is known as a porty. Sweet. Apparently, uh, short for porta potty. <laughs> All right. Good lord. Yeah, I'm kind of done. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you had them hanging out back there. Do you have to set those up? No, nah, they uh, just immediately deploy. Great. say this just for the record. I like World War II war games a lot, but I'm now officially at a point in my life where I want to play them like this, where the computer handles all the overhead. Oh, yeah. 
I'm just running through my head of how many times I would have consulted the rule book by now. Infantry battalion supported by an engineering platoon, a field gun, and a mortar platoon against your recon guys that are hanging out in your trenches. Yeah, that's what we're doing. In a trench, 30% right there. Yeah, there's more, mm -hmm. there's more guys there than I thought. Oh, yeah. This is not one of the tens. But still. Yeah, the problem was I couldn't get him to show up before. I the knew future is not... In any event, the future isn't too bright for him, but you know. Eh, well, you know, I don't know. The stuff that's entrenched in this game hangs on for a long time. True. But all it takes is that one disruption. Right. to say, where are you going? They go blazing off into the desert. Well, as nice as it might be to stand there and shoot at you. Darn it, I was hoping you wouldn't think about that. <laughs> the sh Not a lot of value in it. <laughs> Oh, 
all yours. Well, visibility apparently is improving again. Well, thank God for that. Is is our fellows were having a hard time seeing each other? What folks can see on my map right now is that if you put some of these mechanized units into travel mode, they can move. Yeah, they really can. And I don't mean a little bit. Now, you get them off a road trying to travel cross country and they're not going to get yeah, yeah. as far. But still. I feel embarrassed. I didn't notice that. I've got free French. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, kind of off the ball, but... As far as play goes, but... They are definitely here. Well, it would make sense. Sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> delighted to see them. At this point, I'm delighted to see anybody. Everybody. All God's children got guns. which as a further embarrassing paren explains the success of that anti-aircraft situation. They've got at least, by my count, two ACAC -AC guns back here. Uh. Given that I was focused on where you are, this is not too terribly surprising. I missed it, but still... All well, right. we did just kind of fire this up without a, a, deep, a whole lot of pre. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not not a lot of deep analysis. <laughs> there we go. Ah, uh, take that. Just did. Ooh. Have some grumpy back. Yeah. Double load of grumpy just for me. Luckiest boy in the world. All right, now. Now, if I do that, I'm going to be super sorry. Just going to focus on what we can do. <laughs> You well, jerk. That worked out well, didn't it? Yeah, you know. <laughs> hop fire sucks. Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, can, I, can I get an amen? I didn't like that. Now, mind you, I would have rather gotten a gun, but... Yeah, those, those open-top vehicles like that. Just looking at the victory conditions, one of the things that the guys at WDS did, and I, I respect it, they, they really pushed hard against VP inflation. Yeah. You know, there aren't a whole lot of 10,000-point, 20,000-point battles. 
and uh, takes a lot to start to pile up the casualties that earn you points. That is commentary. Yeah, the other games are, are really the same way. It, it's right. tough to earn enough VPs. Right. It's tough, and, and the window is narrow, too, because you think, oh, I killed three vehicles. Yeah, good. You got two points. Good job. Right, yeah. You know, so it's so it's not as, you know, you're not stacking up piles of chips, as it were. All right. What turn does that take us to? My goodness. Yeah, take it's... us to turn 11. Cranking along. Moving right along. Have a visit from the Luftstash. That was that was nasty. I was okay with everything until that. That was nasty. motorcycle guys cranking along and all I can hear playing in my head is Holiday Road. There's a lot of burning trucks in that hex, isn't there? Or armored cars. Nice. Wait a minute. What? I'm gonna blow that sharpshooter up. <laughs> uh oh. Oh come on, that was the whoosh of a of an anti tank weapon. But whoosh gave me hope. Oh come on.
Oh, no. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, that's the bad day. What Doug and I are talking about is under the combat system here. The bottom line is well-ordered troops with reasonable fatigue and a defensible position are nasty. But if you disrupt them, as he just did, it starts to get a little grim. Like that. You kind of wonder where they think they're going. Away. <laughs> I guess. Dude, you're in trenches. How is this better? PCs all around, gentlemen. Posture. Marsh terrain sucks. That's a really good defensive position. Sometimes you gotta send the infantry. That is a fact.
Alright, that's all the chaos for this turn. <clears throat> More with the visibility improving. Kinds of bad choices, boys. From an op fire perspective, that's one of those shots that you might have not have wanted to take. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah, it, it is fairly important to adjust your op fire preferences. Oh, looky there. Hi. That worked far better than it had any right to. Now what to do here? No easy choices.
These are the things we must do if we hope to endure. If we hope to. <clears throat> Turn 12. Yeah, clock is ticking. Silly little anti tank guns are certainly more trouble than I had anticipated they'd be. Mm -hmm.
we haven't really mentioned this, but you, you need to be really careful how many troops that you put into a given hex. Um, you can overstack a hex to the point where incoming fire will uh, be much more likely to disrupt the units that are in there or to cause casualties. So keeping the units spread out makes an awful lot of sense. In fact, you can break down these platoons if you want into uh, subunits and uh, or you can combine units together but being careful not to overstack becomes fairly critical in fact there's a one of the buttons will tell you what your stacking level looks like High density stacks. Yep. Hard, I spit at thee for hate's sake. All right, all yours. Write this sucker down as one of the more pointless battles of the Second World War. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> do such a great job of positioning troops where they would have been at the time of the battle and all that and then you, you're like well I should be using them right I should involve these troops it's like, yeah. it reminds you that a lot of guys had nothing to do with the battle oh yeah yeah that's that's something that I've, I've thought about a lot in the last uh, 
couple of months is just how a lot of times when we are wargaming, you know, there's that you, you, you do exactly that. Well, you, move everybody, attack with everybody, do something with everybody. And, and that isn't at all what really happens. I'm thinking of these. I got these clearly these pickets, basically. They're, they're sitting up all over the map. And I've got this inclination to move them because I can use them. And, you know, every little bit of fire is going to help here towards the end. But, uh, you know, I'm looking particularly at one guy that I know darn well, given your line of advance and all that, he was he was never going to be close to the fight. Right. Yeah, and, all and that. you know, a, a lot of times those guys end up really doing very little but contributing to friendly casualties. That's also true. No, no, you're absolutely right about that. You, hey, down there. I would have guessed. Okay. Now may I assume that... That's a bitter pill to swallow. in March of 41? It's not exactly a high-tech item. What are they showing them at? They're showing them at 2-0 anti-aircraft. Yeah, they're only 2-1 against hard targets. Yeah, they've got some kind of anti-tank weapon, but I don't know what it is. Well, for all we know, that's chucking grenades under the tanks. Yeah, it could very well be. I, I don't... Based on what I've seen of their results, I, I'm not... I don't, I'm not even feeling piati, if that's a thing. No, just the sound effect is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still like... It just means you're anti-tanking. Right. All right, boys, go to work. Seriously? There we go. Now at least I can see the mortar. Rolling a lot of ones.
man, they aren't spendy on. That's crazy. I've lost 70 men and it's only a seven point cost. Yeah. But it is your turn. What, no airplanes this turn? No, everybody went home. Pity. happy about that. Dang it. Considerably more happy about that.
damn it. There we go. Is that 88 millimeter gun Luftwaffe? That's why it's blue. Uh, yeah, I believe that's the case. It doesn't specifically say that it is, but I believe that it is. I am definitely going to look up this Tower Hamlet's Rifle Brigade. Oh, it's a foot race. Oh, completely. <laughs> yeah, that's completely where we're at. All right, all yours. Holy cow. Uh, yeah, you're right, Brandon. It probably is an anti-tank rifle. Definitely way too early for Piat. Okay. Well, as I say, their uh, relative ineffectiveness would tell you as much, I suppose. Yeah, that... No way... They, they... They... Nobody had that stuff that early in the war. They can cat, but that's about it.
Holy Yuga is all over the place. That is not what I thought I would find. The, uh... <laughs> Do you mind? This one highly motivated 88 crew. Yeah, they're a busy boys. I used to have a mod for Combat Mission Shock Force that was uh, tactical radio chatter that played in the background. Sure. And uh, I, re I always really enjoyed that. It really was a very immersive, and I think something I'd, I'd like something like that uh, for these games more so than the background, uh, you know, the gunfire background, because that that, yeah. that just sort of bugs me. But the tactical radar or uh, radio was. Uh, very immersive. I seem to remember that. Yeah, there were two or three other, two or three mods. One guy in particular did a great one. 
Uh, I think there's a little bit of that in the base game, but but this guy really did a, a nice job of it. Very curious to see. I've only poked around the uh, demo a little bit. Very curious to see what they're able to come up with. Oh, good lord. No trucks for you. No. I'm, I have to admit, I'm really kind of impressed by these little two-pounder jobs. Very scooty. As ridiculous as they seem. On just one. I tell you. I hate to do this, but given that it's turn 14... <laughs> feeling it wasn't going to really help much, but at the same time you're isolated, I'm going to try and run that morale down some. No, that's right. That's right. Not that it helped my morale. Well, folks looking at my screen know that uh, morale could be better. <laughs> For those who don't know, that's hanging out over here.
That's what I was afraid of with those guys. Oh. Yeah, those those uh, Panzer Jaegers, early Panzer Jaegers. They were not going to be terribly successful even against that little like, two pounder. But they weren't achieving much where they were. That is also, and you know, the other thing is, as we discussed, it's not like they're incredibly expensive. Right. be hilarious if the 20 millimeter in the Panzer one was more effective than the other guns. <laughs> All right, that's it. The, at this point, the German advance has largely failed. Yeah, we ought to take a hard look at this, because I don't think... You're going to get... You're going to push out of the major defeat into the minor. You can see that. Because this business in here, stuff at Kuwamal al Mil, you're, you're going to take that at some point. How much is that worth to you now? Uh, it's only worth 25 points. I don't think I'm going to get to a minor defeat. But that is a minor defeat for you right now. At least if oh, I'm yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, we wouldn't so cross you... over into a draw. Right. So you'll get you'll get a minor. But I think at this point, the major, the, the going to a draw is pretty much out of reach for you. Yeah, I don't see it. And in fact, I didn't see it a while back. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I suppose I can. You want to? When I should wrap this turn up and see where we're at? No, no, no. Let's play it out. All right. All right. Good. Yeah. Cool. Let's play. Let's play it out. I. I mean, it's interesting anyway. It's just, I don't. I don't see. Um, at this point, 
the the Germans getting there. Now, what the Germans should have done, uh, where I screwed up was trying to assault these strong points. And yes. You, you can tell that it's been two years since I played Panzer Battles. <laughs> um, because what I forgot was I needed to bypass that. It's interesting because early on, as you came through my recon units, it it I, I that was the thing I was most afraid of. Because I really, it's interesting in the the war the way it models this warfare. I really can't leave these strong points. No. Uh -uh. You know when I'm when I'm in the strong points, as we've seen over this valley, I'm. I'm pretty cool, but uh, outside of them, pass. Yeah, and uh, and I have treated this more treated those more as they were as if they were Napoleonic village hexes. <laughs> and and what I really so, needed to do was mechanized warfare, just go around them. It's a, it's a really hard thing to learn. Well, it's a hard thing that, to get to feel right. Yeah. You, know, you, you, don't, you don't feel like you're doing something right. Oh, doggone it. Nice. You finally got a truck. Yeah. The engineers. The engineers got one of the trucks. That's awesome. Not surprised. Doughty lads, they. Uh, you can just sit there and op fire. You're not doing that. You kind of wonder what travel mode looks like to six dudes. <laughs> now this mess. Right, let's pound on some guys. Yeah, those guys killed one of my trucks. Plenty shooty, but to no effect. Yeah, now, now Brandon is telling me that I should have bypassed to the White House. And Eddie's right. <laughs> oh, you're a jack wagon. You are a jack wagon. Oh, my hate for you is great indeed. Yeah, the problem is that while that's great and all, um, 
<clears throat> Brandon in my stream had commented I needed to, after we were discussing it, that I needed to bypass to the White House. And, he, and he's dead on. I mean, that's that's really what needs to happen here. And that, that's a very different, uh, you know, we, we spend all of our time playing 18th, 19th century. And so you, you wouldn't do that in Napoleonics or pre-Napoleonics. But here, mechanized warfare, yeah, I should have blown right through there. Uh, so even killing your trucks, it, it doesn't help me a whole lot at this point. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, we, I think we've pretty well established that you're going to wind up somewhere in the vicinity of a minor defeat. So so this is this goes down as moral victory, killing my beloved trucks. That's true. That's very true. As a matter of fact, you got zero points for them. Wow. I mean, I'm sure it aggregates out somehow, but... Yeah, you got, uh, yeah, you got no points. I didn't like that. Oh, yeah. See, that's the thing. I mean, oh, oh. Well, there we go. That's that's the other side of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was going to be no doubt trying to push through there that you know you'd take some casualties doing it, but but once you're through it. Right. You know. I'm I'm as I say, I'm useless. Looking at I've just been clicking around my troops and again, God bless the men of the Tower Hamlets rifle brigade, but I don't got a lot of dudes. Right.
That was brutal. Those guys are dug in. Now, it carved them up, but... Yeah, yeah. But they is holding on, man. Which is, you know, really the deal here is it's it's really, really difficult to uh, to dislodge good order troops. And that's yeah. obviously part of the game philosophy, right? No, I mean, it's dead on. It's very accurate. Uh, one thing that is kind of important uh, for those of you who are watching from a, a demoing perspective, uh, the reason I actually moved troops out of the way up there was to try and open up hexes that those guys could retreat into. One of the worst things that you can do is actually surround a hex that you're trying to assault. Even if the defenders are disrupted, uh, if they've got nowhere to go, they'll fight to the finish. And uh, that's a little bit of what's going in here. I probably actually need to move another stack of troops out of the way because uh, they won't retreat into zones of control. So right. I, I think at this point, part of the reason that assault failed was your guys had nowhere to go. That's probably true. Uh, we saw earlier on the guys just a little bit here to the southeast that were in that fortification had a place to retreat due north and absolutely did so. Right. Trying to do mental calculations and figure out how big this map would be on the tabletop. Other than the obvious really flippin' big. Down to the wire. Here we go. <clears throat> Bunch of isolation. Well, one unit got unfatigued. Take that. One. Yeah. Join the line. And that takes us to here, where all the fun is. God bless, lads. Okay.
Just not feeling it. That's a important observation you made about how low the VPs are for casualties. That's different than a lot of the other tiller games. Oh, yes. My first and greatest love is obviously Napoleonics. Um, unfortunately, one of the problems with the system, at least, uh, I don't know if I want to say unmodified or uh, if, you're, if you're just not thinking about it in a certain way, is that it, you can really wind up with absurd combat casualties. Yeah. You know, yeah, things you that really would never have, you know, that never would have happened historically. You know, most good Napoleonic games will say, "Look, at thirty percent casualties, killed and wounded, the battle's over. The other side's just going to quit and try to get out of the battle without losing the entire army." Uh, you won't find many Napoleonic battles where the rates. And again, I'm talking about the actual day of battle, not pursuits and things like that. Right. Uh, you're just not going to see that, and unfortunately, you'll get well above that in some of these. But here. Uh, it's uh, it's one of the things that really makes me sad that they're not going, at least that I'm aware, um, WDS is going to be redoing the Civil War games. Uh, and a, sort of along a gold standard line, the way they've been doing the uh, Panzer campaign games. And that's really exciting um, because they do great work. And uh, it's, it's a real shame they're not doing it to the Napoleonic games. At least not yet. Yeah, I, I don't think they've changed... I don't think they've changed the engine too much, though. They have done some of the Civil War games already. Okay. Uh, and graphically, they're they're very different, but I don't think they've changed much of the underlying engine. Well, I don't worry about the engine so much, but I am wondering about the scenarios and the victory conditions. Yeah, all that seems about the same. Okay. Oh. Well, yeah, op fire. That's... <laughs> To Brand I, th I think you said it was Brandon. To Brandon's point, there it is. Come on. Nothing. Well, diving into your last go round. Yep. Bottom line is you've got to take it. Yep. Here we go. No bombers. Oh, there they are. I was going to be disappointed. That second air attack was gratuitous. I, I was about to say that was that was spiteful. Yeah, it really was. <laughs>
think my headset's about to uh, run out of battery. Oh dear. We have to make sure to get to this last assault. Yeah, we're getting real close. Because frankly, either way, my turn won't amount to much. Yeah, right back at you. Still did not push him out of there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, those guys were tenacious because they had a retreat path. Oh, sure did. Morale down to E. Fatigue. Yeah. Fatigue of 128. Seven guys. can see by how close I am here that a bypass would have really worked. That certainly would have given me a bad day, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, that's really the, the German, you know, it's, it's Blitzkrieg. It's the same deal. Sure. It's desert warfare, charge, you know, bypass the outpost and get in there, man. Yep. If, Take if, it over and... Oh yeah, I could have been here by about turn eight. I um, should think. So, you know, that would have made these attacks a different deal. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it's interesting. Obviously, uh, we'll have to take another shot at it. 
Yeah, at well, some point. N- now that we remember how to play, or at least I do. Yeah. No, no. Uh, well, yeah, I, but, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty much the one with the obsession with shiny VP looks, so I absolutely would have taken all darn day to take care of that. All, all right. right. Here should, we go. Ch- I'm going to... I'm going to, I'm just checking it out. There we go. All right, then. Yeah, good game. I enjoyed playing this again. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. This is a, just for those who have stuck with it the whole time, this is coming out pretty soon, and hopefully we will, uh, be able before it launches or maybe right after it launches to get back on and try something and uh, let you have another look at what is Panzer Battles North Africa 1941 by WDS uh, War Game Design Studio and John Tiller Software yeah and so that's where you're going to want to pick it up when it comes out because all the cool kids are playing it what can I tell you very but, true but uh Yeah, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. Thanks very much. All right.